Hello and welcome to Mugen. Again, welcome back. I know it's been like probably a year and a half since I last made a video, but this is two of the most requested videos I've ever had, and I think uh, it's probably time I can uh, do them. So uh, first off, I'm going to do a palette tutorial on how to make palettes for a character, and the second half of the video, uh, which the majority of it's going to be, is AI tutorial. Now this is a very basic AI tutorial. To do actual complicated things, you'd have to delve deeper into triggers and um, conditions and stuff like that. So let's start off with a palette. So this character here, this is um, Karen. Uh, this is the one I made. And um, these are her palettes that I uh, gave her. Now I know in my original tutorial, I used eye draw or exclamation draw, whatever you want to call it, to make palettes, which I do still use um, to make palettes. Uh, let's see. Like here. Uh, let's see. Okay, yeah, like here. This is um, a character I never finished, but I was working on a common rider. And um, see, his pal here is really fugly, and these are the used ones. Uh, all these colors. Uh, why? Are, hmm. Oh, this is why. This is why he's all these colors. So that was that. And then I was working on a chrysalid, and um, you know, I was recoloring him. And, you know, this is the colors down here. So I still use eyedraw to make palettes, but the easiest way to teach people how to do it is from Fighter Factory. So now, let's go over to this first palette here. Um, you can go to... Where is it? Let's see. All right. Nope, not there. Not there. No palettes. All right. So go to palettes, then go to advanced palette editor. <clears throat> pick a sprite, any sprite. I like to pick the stand just because the stand seems to work for me. Um, zoom in, because zooming in is a good thing. And if I can expand this window, yes I can, that's excellent. Alright. So now, using the, uh, the, what's it called, the enable the color picker for quick selection tool, I would pick this, and then I would say pick her shirt. Okay, so that's the brightest color, I think. And uh, you see it lights up here. So then I pick the next dark one, good, and then the next dark one, good. And the black I'll leave because black is black, you can't really change black. So now after you've selected your colors, which are these three in this case, I will move the sliders here basically to alter it. So, no, that doesn't look good at all. See that? Nice orange. Nice magenta. Purple. Uh, red orange. You can also change the saturation levels. So this is a great tool for that as well. And oh, this is the this is a hue mapping, so you could literally do like a rainbow palette effect here. Cool. All right, so let's hit the X, hit the X. That uh, the X resets and the the check mark confirms whatever you're doing. Apply changes. So let's give her a a, a green palette. Uh, the easiest way at this point is to mess with this. So that's that, and I hit confirm. So then I would pick. Right click to empty the selections, yeah. Or actually, you know, you could just, yeah, right click to empty the selection. Pick the ink dropper tool again, or whatever you want to call it. Let's go for the, what did I do? Oh. How did I do that? I don't know. Okay, let's do this over again. That was weird. You can also click and drag. Alright, so give her green. If you have a mouse roller, be careful, because that's what I, uh, I just touched, and it kind of undid the work. I'm not sure why. I'll saturate that a little bit. Okay. Right click, right click, right click. Ink dropper tool, go for the blue. Alright. Um, green goes with... Uh, I don't know, Christmas colors, red. Oh, that's not what I thought it was. Whoa, that is cool. Seizure like. Okay, so don't ever pick that color. That's a bad idea. Okay. Okay. Uh, green. Okay, green and yellow look good, I think. I, I'm not fully sure right now, honestly. So confirm and confirm. Now let's clear the colors. I could be doing this wrong. I could be doing this the long way for all I know. But click that again. Let's go for her hair, which her, her hair is in time to her face. So let's click the yellow. And let's give her, let's see if she looks so, oh, that's ugly. Uh, let's try black hair. How does she look with black hair? Not that great. 
Okay. Uh, blue. Her hair does not look great any color. Unless it's yellow. That's just stupid. Yeah, even if I saturate it, that does nothing. Alright, so after you make your palette, then you would go to the double floppy disk, which is uh, the save as group slash index in the Sprite or, Sprites editor. You save it and you put it in as say, um, the, so each character has a total of 12 palettes, and I think if you really want to be safe, you would add it as group 1 index 13. 13 is generally a number that's off your uh, your basic 12. Huh, I did the one like that already. It's off your basic 12? Is it probably at the end? Yeah, it's at the end. Uh, let me or Can I organize this? Hmm. No. Wait. Palettes. No. Okay. Can't really organize it. Okay, so... Basically, these are her original 12 palettes, or 9 palettes for that case, and at the end is 13. So I could put this as palette 10 if I wanted to, or 11 or 12, and I could select, or I could leave it 13 and use the remap palette tool, which I'm not really sure how that works in Mugen, but I know it works if you test it in Fighter Factory. So for the sake of everything safe and holy, um, we're going to save it as, 13, as 10, 110. And I'm going to remap it so I can test it in Fire Factory. The source is 101, which is default, and the, the, the destination, I'm assuming, whatever this is, is going to be 110. Okay, so now when I go to the sprite file, she'll have the palette. And I can make sure all the colors look good, which they kind of don't with that black outline. But that is okay. Uh, let's test it in game. Okay, so that didn't work in game. But I'm sure. Um, I'm sure it will work anyways because you saved it as a number and yeah, I don't have any pal effect codes or pal, pal effects there. So yeah, um, so that, that's pretty much it honestly. So you go to palette and then advanced palette editor, you use the ink dropper tool, select the colors to your choosing, click and drag, best way, click drag like that. I got some of the blue in there. Yeah, let's actually, let's try this. Let's make her more, uh, Let's saturate. There we go. That's not bad. I can make it very bright. Saturate. Bright. Saturate. Faster. I think for a while this, this kind of scheme was going on for like uh, um, Street Fighter X Tekken characters where they're kind of washed out looking for some strange reason. I mean, it looks good to a degree, but I, I wouldn't I wouldn't rely on it at all. So anyways, that, that's pretty much it how to make palettes. And if you don't want to save it to the palette editor and you're doing old school Mugen, like um, Wind Mugen, you can always um save it. Where is it? Okay, save as a new file, and that'll pretty much save as an act file. So you can name it, like, say, uh, PAL13 or something like that, or whatever number you want. And then you can load it into Mugen the old-fashioned way by um, having it here. Well, not there, but, um, you know, having it in the def file. And uh, that would work really nicely. Alrighty. Let's see, how's this going? Alright. By the way, this is what I use to record videos. OBS Studios. It's a freeware um, program, and you can pretty much uh, record whatever you want. You have to, it's a little tricky to set up. I'll do a tutorial on that later on, how to set that up. All right, so that's the palettes. So let's go on to AI. Everyone wants AI in their character. Why? Because characters with generic Kung Fu Man AI, they tend to suck. Suck ass, like hard. So how do you code AI? Like, it's super tricky. And luckily, Saravi has made an AI tutorial. It's a wonderful AI guide that's more or less copy-paste at this point. He's done such a wonderful job. You can, you can read it at uh, MuganFreeForAll.com slash index dot php question mark slash topic slash 22615 dash Saravi's dash AI dash guide forward slash. That's confusing as hell. I'll put a link in the description. Now, I, I just reposted it. I didn't really write this myself. I, I know nothing about AI coding other than using this method. So, he pretty much has a general information about the various ways of doing it. The human impossible commands, which look like... Okay, it doesn't look like that. It looks like this. It looks... Why is that B? Why did that V light up? That's weird. I never knew V could light up for this. 
Huh. That was odd. Um, yeah, it, it looked like something like this. Like some really ridiculous command that nobody can do and like the time will be set to 1. Which is impossible because nobody can have trigger fingers like that. Hello, what's this? It's a Skype chat. From a friend. I shall go offline now. Good day. Goodbye. <laughs> okay. Um, Alright, so following this tutorial, I'm skipping ahead reading all of this stuff, but you should definitely read it. So yeah, there's the impossible human uh, commands. There's the helper method, which will trigger the AI when a helper is active, which spawns at the beginning of the round, and that's confusing. The XOR method, which I don't remember what that stands for, and the is home team method, which I don't remember hearing that method either. However, I work strictly with Mogu 1.0, and sometimes 1.1, but the AI code works the same in both versions. So to start off, you would copy all of this stuff here. Like, this is literally copy and paste at this point. And this is my uh, one of my latest characters, Max. You might remember him, he's a giant robot there. Um, he has no AI. Like, I'm gonna let the AI take over and look at him go. That's all Kung Fu Man right there. Yep, that is a lot of Kung Fu Man in him. Alright, so now, the first part of this, it says negative one. So negative one, if you didn't know, is in your command file. You would scroll down to the bottom, you would see state def negative one. I like to keep this directly below negative one, just so I know where it is. Okay. This is explaining the numbers, how the numbers work. Uh, generally speaking, um, let's see, I, if I'm correct, the, the higher these numbers are, the faster it is to um, activate. I could be wrong. I could be very, very wrong. Alright, so next, <clears throat> these are AI-specific commands. This is not for the player, this is strictly for AI. And, uh, this is a command for human. Okay. Alright, so this is what the AI command block looks like. So basically, the trigger all would be the command is super, the power is greater than 30, the state is standing, the player, uh, computer has to have less than half-life, they have to have control, or they have to be in state 1000 and hit a combo or something, then they go to the thing, the super. Uh, this is a block for a human player, it describes the super moves at 3000, okay. Um, wait a second. Oh, you know what? I actually read that wrong. Um, this top block here, this is, uh, this is conditions. Remove the conditions limited to human players. This is all conditions for human players. This is not for AI, sorry. The next part of this is for AI. So I will copy this and pasta this. So I could put this anywhere. I generally like to keep my AI coding at the very bottom of the, uh, this, the command file, which I will do now. So at the very bottom. And I'll copy one of these little thingies. AI. Now, I'm not really doing the AI for this character. I'm just doing it for the tutorial sake. Uh, this bothers me. I must make it equal. Okay. So, jab of death. I'm going to call it jab of death because he's going to spam the, two bu uh, the, the A button. And he's going to be state 200. That's the thing. Alright, so, <clears throat> if you read the comments, trigger all. Variable 59, greater than 0. This on Use this only if the AI is on. And the AI is on because we set that here. Turn the AI on when. So the AI turns on when it's set to zero, round is two, blah blah blah, and blah 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 blah. If you read it, you can it'll make a little more sense or it might confuse you, but generally you can copy and paste it. Um, power has to be 30. We don't need a power code because it's a jab. State type of S. We have to limit it so the computer only does this on the ground and not in the air. We don't need to limit the life because that's not necessary for a jab. Uh, P2 state type has to be sta they have to be standing, so both players have to be standing at this point for him to jab like crazy. The in guard distance, meaning um, the the if the player or the computer's player is within attack range, they will not do the attack. They're gonna guard instead. So by in that guard distance, basically, they're saying that you have to be a certain distance away from me. Uh, random variable, this is 50, 50, 50, what is 50 stand for, let's see, 59, 59, 50, okay, so 50 is the, the, the multiplications for the, uh, 
the the rate of attack. Okay. Okay, so we leave it at 1.1. You can always change this to like 1.9 or something. I wouldn't put it on 2. 2 is a little too much because it's, it's multiplying, so the value will be dramatically higher. Um, we don't need to trigger 2. Whoa, that's a lot of comments here. All right. Uh, okay, so we'll use. <clears throat> we'll only have one trigger one. Control. That's it. And this is a ABS means absolute. Uh, P two by this X is less than forty. So when we get within range of max, he's gonna start jabbing like crazy. <laughs> See? <clears throat> that sucker. <laughs> Jab, 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 jab. Yeah, see, now he's just... The, the rest of the AI is still taking over, just because it's incomplete, but as you can see, he's jabbing a lot more now than ever before. Alrighty, scrolling. This next part here, this is a combination of AI and player-controlled coding. If, if, if putting regular AI is difficult for you, don't even consider this. If you want to make it neat, you can combine both codes, but again, this is it's a little complicated and it's confusing if you don't know what you're looking at. So I would keep it separate like what I have here with the player controls on top and the AI control at the bottom. Just because you want to make it easier for yourself. Going down, this is actually the final part of his tutorial here. Um, guarding. So, blah, blah, blah. Okay. The, the guarding part is to make the AI know when to guard. What does that sound? It's Skype. Okay. So I'll copy the guard state stuff. Uh, paste it right under the uh, AI stuff. And what's the next step here? Okay. And it, to make this work completely. Well, so with the AI code alone, the computer will guard. Spa what's the word? Uh... It's another word for spazzing. Uh, I can't think of the word right now. I don't know why. Hmm. Confusing. Anyways. Spastic. Spastic? Spastic. Okay. They'll spastically guard or try to guard something that's not really coming at them. So it looks like they're flickering in a very strange way. Very unnaturally for a fighting character. So to fix that, you have to copy all of the guard codes that have been modified to work with the AI code. Right here. And uh, I like to keep things in order. So my CNS, I would pause, uh, put that at the top. Um, let me see, the number is 120, so I'll put it at the top above lose by time over and paste it. And that's pretty much all over there. This is all guard codes. Oh, well, no. Um, yeah, this is all guard codes going upwards and such. And let's see what's next. I'll close this. Next one. Jump. If you want, you can make him jump too, but um, jumping is kind of a random thing moving characters do. If your character relies heavily on air combat, this is necessary for you. The same thing though, it's all based on your triggers. Like for instance, you would have to use a trigger uh, P2, um, P2 state type equals A. And that would mean anytime the player enters an air state, which is any jump, the you know your your computer character will jump up or do an attack or something. And the last is the reverse, making the character not jump. Okay, and this is to limit the the jump in general. Yes. Yeah, this is to limit the jump, just so it's not spammed. And that is pretty much all there is to AI. At this point, you can literally... Uh, let me go back to the command file. You can literally copy and paste this block, change the numbers, and it will... Give them AI. So I copied it three times there, as you can see. Um, now I'm going to change my triggers. I'm going to make him combo ABC. So state number equals 200 and move hit equals one. He'll go to state uh, no, 300. Okay, now trigger one will be state number equals 300 and 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 percent move hit equals one. He'll go to state 400. And just for the hell of it, I'm going to make him her, him go into a super, which would be, so when 400 is hit, go into um, 2,000, five piece. Okay.
Okay, let's test it. Okay, so there's a, there's a typo in the word in guard distance. That's apparently never been fixed. Guard distance, there we go. Alright, that was a minor issue. Time so for let's a little put him fun. on AI, let's see what he does. Let's see? I didn't expect that. See? So every time I get close within 40 pixels, or I'm not sure what that 40 ever stands for. I want to assume pixels. Um, anytime I get within that range, he will do that combo for well, majority of the time. And he'll pretty much end it the same way. So there you go. Basic AI tutorial. Now he actually fights back. Let's see if I can fight him. Nope, he's a jerk. He is a straight jerk. Don't trust him. Ah, you robotic bastard. Speaking of which, off topic, I'm updating Max as I go. And, um, you know, speed, they'll up uh, update it as well. So, he'll get a new voice. He needs a new voice. So, you see, AI is awesome. And it's as simple as copying this segment of AI, copying the guard segment of AI, um, and then copying this segment of AI and then using your triggers accordingly. So long term, I would, um, the only triggers I really use are, you need are the variable, the state type, the absolute P2 body distance X or Y depending on what you're doing, P2 state type equals X or P2 state type equals A if they're in the air, not in guard distance. Uh, a random var 50 times 1.5. You can always use a higher number if need be. Oh, so let's see. Yeah, 50 is AI level 1 times 3. Okay. Yeah. Uh, it's, if you read about the, uh, the, if you read the AI tutorial, it'll explain what these numbers really mean. But I generally use, say, like this for uh, a not too common move common move I want it very often I want it like really really often I want it right away so that's how I generally go about doing it um, and then your trigger one which is your actual trigger to start everything so like for the first combo I have control so once the player the computer has control of the character they can jab and after they jab and they make move contact they can go to the next state and then in that state if they make move contact they can go to the next state and then that state to the super state so it's your trigger ones really that lead you into everything else, but the, these other codes are very necessary to, to make the AI work properly. Now that's pretty much it for AI, but there's something I should mention. Um, there are a couple of deprecated codes here in um, this code, and it's basically hit vel set that doesn't work anymore. So what you can do is, oh, let me just put that lowercase. You can replicate it by just using a vel set code and a hit vel x as the as the actual number. Oh, shoot, hit vel doesn't work. Yeah, hit vel does not work, so it has to be a vel set. And then this can be hit vel x. If it has to be capital or not, it doesn't really matter. Mugen is very flexible with that syntax. However, uh, most most codes in Mugen are kind of lowercase except for s controls. Um, hit Bell X, hit bell Y. And that's pretty much it. Now the only bug is this. I, I don't know what the hell that is. I had never figured that out. But that's that's pretty much it, honestly. And there you go. You've just learned how to make palettes. And you've just learned how to make AI. Look at him. Look at that rainbow palette. That's awesome. I did a good job with that. In fact, in fact, in fact, in fact. Do I still have the code here? Yeah, I do still have the code here. I'm going to end this video with a rainbow palette. Blinding you by the light. If only I had some really super awesome high energy like techno dance music or something. That would totally be awesome. And check this out. I'll enable it to view Mugen. And look how Mugen is displayed after I do that. Time for a little Round fun. One. It's awesome because it takes over the screen. Hey, hey, hey. Why no disco -y? What is this nonsense? Why no disco -y? Arg. Alright, no disco for me. Oh, that's interesting.
Well, next tutorial, I'll explain this problem, because this problem is awesome. Well, thanks everybody, take care, and I hope to see you next time. Toodaloo, bye-bye.